account, but my baby girl does not have an American bank account. My baby girl has a Swiss bank account. She knows what they're doing to the currency. She knows they're debasing the currency. She knows that in her lifetime, the US dollar is going to be problematical at best. So I urge you to figure this out and figure out ways to, you can also figure out enormous ways to, to profit from it. I mean, Vince, I heard him this, this earlier today talking about some of the ways you can profit from currencies. Take him at his word and take the US government at their word. Another thing we can discuss today before we start uh, taking questions concerns the financial markets, or maybe more directly the financial markets. The first two things we discussed are the financial markets. You know, in the 1980s and 90s, we had a huge bull market in bonds. Between 1981 and 2003, bonds essentially went up all the time. Well, in my view, that bull market is finished. Bonds made their peak in, 19, in, sorry, in 2003. And after a 22-year bull market, bonds in 2003 have started making a big top and will be going down for years to come. Even if I'm wrong about bonds, you're not going to make any money at bonds with, at 4% or 2% in Japan or 5%, whatever you're, whatever, you're, whatever you're earning on your bonds, on your long-term bonds. So I would urge you to stay away from bonds unless you're their very short-term bonds or unless they're special situation bonds. Stocks, stocks in the 80s and 90s had a huge bull market. Many of you were part of it. Many of you remember it. But in my view, that bull market too has come to an end. If you look at stocks in the West, in the West anyway, stocks on any traditional historic valuation method are expensive. Stocks in the West, if you look at dividend yields, price to earnings uh, ratios, book value, look at all the classic valuation methods which people have used for decades. And you will find that stocks in the West are expensive. Now these are not any good for short-term trading or short-term investing or even medium-term investing. But over many periods, over many years, the secular basis has pretty much been when stocks are this expensive in the West, you sell them when they get down another many percentage points, then you buy them. So stocks at best in the West, in my view, are now in a big trading range. If you can buy them down here and sell them up here two or three years later, Vince is good at that. I'm not. But if you're good at that, you can perhaps make a lot of money. We had periods like this in the past. In the 1970s, there was a period like this. A lot of people made a lot of money in those days. But most people need and essentially need a bull market, a rising market, a secular bull market, where stocks base, or things basically go up all the time. We have a market like that now. It is in raw materials, natural resources, commodities, call them whatever you want to. So we do have a, a new bull market and another asset class. When I try to explain this to most people, you know, most people still can't spell commodities. Most people don't have a clue about commodities. Most people think you get your coffee at Starbucks. They don't know you can buy and sell coffee and make a fortune at it. But you can. When I tell people, let's, let's make a lot of money in commodities, they just they get perplexed. But I, have to, I would like to remind you all that as recently as 25 or 30 years ago, if I had come here and said to you, buy mutual funds or unit trusts, most people in the UK couldn't spell mutual funds. Most people in, in Europe, even in Europe, didn't know there was a stock market. If you had gone to, say, Rome, Rome or Paris or, or Madrid and said, take me to the stock exchange, people would have said, what is a stock exchange? I know, because I was there. I was doing it. People didn't even know they had stock exchanges or what they were. Well, then we had a big, long 20-year bull market. People learned about stocks and mutual funds and unit trust and hedge funds. My God, everybody learned about this stuff. That's where commodities are right now. Most people don't have a clue about commodities, don't know you can make vast fortunes, even though the commodity markets are the second biggest markets in the world. The foreign currency markets are the biggest market in the world. The second biggest market is the, foreign, is the commodities markets. More oil trades every day in the world than all of the stock exchanges put together in the world. I mean, these are gigantic markets, 
and every one of you knows a lot about commodities. I suspect not a one of you had a clue what a dot-com was, but you were all buying and selling it. You know what orange juice is, you know what coffee is, you know what petrol is, you know what copper is. So this stuff is a lot more accessible and a lot easier to understand. I didn't say it was easy, I just said it's a lot easier. Now when I tell all this to people, people say, they're still confused and they say, well, what's going on? And I try to say, look, you can go back and look this up. Throughout history, we've had long bull markets in commodities, followed by long bear markets, followed by long bull markets again. I'm not a smart guy, I just went and looked it up. You can go look it up too. It's happened for hundreds of years. Things get out of whack, then you're gonna say to me, how long does it last? The shortest bull market I could find in commodities lasted 15 years. The longest lasted 23 years. I don't have a clue how long this one's gonna last, but if history is any guide, if history is any guide, this bull market will last until sometimes between 2014 and 2022. That's if things work the way they have in the past. So we have a long way to go. We just, this bull market started in 1999. It has years to go yet. So now you're gonna say to me, well, wait a minute, what causes this? 